The recent GNOME Beta 47 has made some substantial feature additions with the final production release expected around mid-September. Highlights of the feature changes in GNOME Shell are things like Support for using hardware encoding for screen recording, which I find very interesting. They also fixed the WPA2 connection bug in enterprise networks. With other minor changes. When it comes to Mutter, the fixed visibility issues of apps still relying on XWayland. Also, work was started on future HDR support. Furthermore, support was added for tablet tool key bindings as well as touch pressure ranges, along with some memory leak fixes and other minor bug fixes. Manjaro recently released an immutable version of its operating system for community testing. This is following along the lines of other immutable systems like Fedora, Silverblue, and Vanilla OS. It is built using the ArcDep toolkit. For those who don't know, an immutable distro ensures that the operating system's core remains unchanged by making the root file system read-only, making it possible to stay the same across multiple instances. The post provides instructions on how to install it and test it out. In other art-related news, SBCTL, developed by Fox Boron, had a major release. SBCTL, a user-friendly secure boot key manager, as the name suggests is capable for setting up secure boot with key management support. In a recent update, we can see that the following changes have been made. Firstly, Bundle UKI support will be deprecated in favor of Dracut. Blandlock, this feature will be turned on by default. If you want to disable it, you can run the program with the flag. Disable dash landlock. Files will also be moved from user share secure boot to varlib sbctl. Support for configuration files and the new setup function were also added, with the configuration file being located in etsy slash sbctl slash sbctl.com. Another interesting addition would be the support for TPM key files. You can now create TPM key files with Go-TPM key files, which is similar to how TPM2 and TSS key files are created. Other software release news, we have the release of Pixel on version 1. It is what they call a powerful and accessible open source pixel art multi tool It can make pixel art style works like images and animations. They released it on Steam as well. This is really good in the sense that more creative tools are being made for the Linux platform. You can buy the program on Steam or itch.io. In Linux news, global stats count assured a new all-time high of Linux desktop users. Linux users have now reached an all-time high of 4.45%. In relation, Alma Linux has also reached 1 million active systems. Alma Linux is a free and open source community owned and governed enterprise Linux distribution. In the Steam system survey, we find that Linux comprises around 2% of the systems, with Arch Linux holding a slight majority share over Linux Mint and Ubuntu. The edge of Arch Linux systems is probably due to Steam OS being based off of Arch. In more general tech news, Google Chrome will be releasing new AI-powered features for Chrome users. It will add features like visual search, which will use Google Lens to recognize the image and do a reverse image Google search. It can also solve mathematical equations as well as translate text directly. They will also add a new AI tab compare that rips out what it considers relevant data which could be useful to you. Also a smart conversational way of looking up your history. For example here they ask things like, what film did I read about last week? Then it pulled up a relevant match from your browser history. In other browser news, picture in picture has already existed, but now when you switch tabs when playing a video, it makes the video come up in a small floating window. And if you got back to the tab, the video snaps back into place. This is really smooth, I have to say. It is available in Firefox 130 if you want to try it out. In Argentina, the government will start to use AI to predict future crimes before it happens. The plans were announced by Argentina's security forces. It will use machine learning algorithms and historical data to predict future crimes. 
They will also deploy facial recognition software that will analyze footage in real time as well as patrol social media. We can all see the problem with this. Hopefully the people of Argentina see it too. To combat people using ChatGPT for doing their work, OpenAI says it is working on tools that can detect writing from ChatGPT. They considered watermarking the output, but they say that it may lead to the possibility of circumvention. Moreover, they have previously shut down an AI text detector for its low rate of accuracy. They are still working on a watermarking method and they would likely release tools that will be able to detect chat GPT text. In other news related to OpenAI, many of the US news sites are blocking the OpenAI search GPT web crawler bot. The New York Times previously sued OpenAI and Microsoft for allegedly using their work to create competing products. More news on Chrome. It seems Google Chrome will be blocking the usage of uBlock Origin and have requested users to move to manifest v3-based ones. The creator of uBlock Origin said that there will not be a manifest v3 version of his extension. This is a huge blow for web browser users and the expected deprecation of manifest v2 will be starting in June of 2025. Intel is laying off over 15,000 employees and will stop all non-essential work. They believe that this will save them around $10 billion. And lastly, Ubuntu recently saw a revenue growth of $251 million from last year as well as an increase of more than 1,000 employees. This is intriguing as there are actually people who got through the interview process by Canonical.